Hey, Ruth. Welcome, everybody. I'm so excited to be able to show you what I'm going to show you today. I know a lot of you are excited to see this. Let me show you the card I'm going to work on. I am just going to do it in my cameo. So I'm going to send you down this way so you can see. And then I'll switch camera angle. All right, so this is what, I, oopsie, I put it my way, right? Like this, and then it's right side up for you, I think, maybe? Not sure. But anyway, this is what I'm going to work on today, showing you how to do this. And oh my gosh, this is just so gorgeous, you guys. I absolutely love it. I'm blown away by how pretty it is. So this is a print, then cut. So I printed it on my printer. And then before I cut this out, I went ahead and used my quill pen on here. So I think it turns out really pretty cool. Um, yeah, I'm happy you found me. <laughs> so, okay, so it is upside down for you guys now, right? So I do need to turn it the other way. Yep, turn it around this way. Must be the way I have, whatever way I have my phone on there, I guess up there since that's the camera up there but anyway this is what I'm going to show you how to make today and it's really easy although if you're brand new to using silhouette software or silhouette studio it's a little bit more advanced so don't get discouraged if you find it being a little bit tough but this is something else I had made the other day and this was not a print then cut And I can actually show you something now, the difference between these two cards that I have right here. And oh, by the way, this is the uh, tool that I'm using. So if you're interested in getting it, I'll have a link for it down below the video. If you want to use my link, it's an Amazon link. I get a teeny tiny commission. It helps me to purchase some of the supplies I need, like the new iPad mini I got. And the other day, I think I told you all that I dropped my regular iPad and I cracked it. So hopefully I won't have to be repairing that. But anyway. Um, I wanted to show you the difference between these two cards. This one right here, I think is perfect. And I don't know if you're gonna be able to see the gold on there that well. But this one is just perfect the way it turned out. The gold on here is really, really nice. This one, the first one that I did, it wasn't as great. It was really super at the top. But when you get down to the bottom, there, you can see it at that angle. See how it's sort of messed up a little bit at that angle down here at the bottom? So let me show you this one again. And it, okay, at the bottom of this one, it's really not messed up at all. It's perfect. Okay, I'm going to show you how you can get it to be more perfect and not have that little bit of a mess up like this one. And it has to do with how much your threshold is up when you do your trace. So anyway, let's get started. Thank you, m'lady. Okay, so I'm going to send you up here to um, my Silhouette software. Let me move some of these things out of the way and try to stay organized. Let me put you up here. I have a whole cart of notes so I don't mess up. And I have... Um, Lots of stuff ready, so hopefully there won't be any kind of issues like the one I had yesterday. So, here we are up here, and let me move this camera up a little bit so I can see. Hold on. Okay, so here we are in Silhouette, and I happen to have the Business Edition, and I don't think that you have to have the Business Edition for this. Of course, we that have crickets know you always have to have the Business Edition to be able to use uh, your cricket machine. But anyway... Um, so I'm here in Silhouette Design Studio or Silhouette Business Edition and I've already gotten this tree as you can see here on my screen and I will have a link down below the video for you to get this tree if you'd like it or actually I can show you right now where I found it. I found it right here. It's a website called pmgkey.com and then I just looked up Christmas. So, like I said, here it is, what it looks like here on the free site where you can get it. It's a free download, or I'll have a link for it down below. So, right here, it tells you how to download it. And it actually shows that you could share it, so I could probably share it right here in our Facebook groups. But I'll work on that later. 
So let's go back to my silhouette. Here we are, and I've brought in the image just like this. Now if you'll notice, if I go over here to send it, if I think it's ready to go just as it is, let's look and see what's gonna happen. Okay, if I send this, the only thing that you have is, well, let me uh, click on it and say sketch the edge. Notice when it's gonna sketch the edge, it's just making this whole outside line right here, and that's not what we want. Even if I say this sketch thing right here, it's still just gonna sketch a big square all the way around here, and that's definitely not what we want. So I'm gonna go back to design, and if you hear some fellows talking in the background, I'm having my air conditioner worked on, so they're talking about that. Anyway, um, so here we are, we've got this, and we have to trace it. So I'm gonna go over here to the trace panel. Let's see, let's make sure I'm, oh no. Okay, I'm gonna follow my notes so I don't get ahead of myself. The first thing I want to do is duplicate this, and I'm gonna duplicate it twice. Probably a little overkill, I don't really need two of them, but I'm just gonna do it just in case. So I hit the Alt key on my keyboard after I've selected my thing, and you see how my the little hand here turns from a hand to a plus sign. So I can drag one over there, and I have one, and I'm gonna drag another one over there just because I like to have two of them, just because. But I'm gonna move them way out of the way so they don't bother me. All right, so now we're with this one. All right, so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to show you the way you do not want to trace this. I'll show you that first, and then I'll leave the way you want to trace it in your head for the final one. So let's see, the way you do not want to trace it is just to come over here for the trace tool, select the trace area, and go ahead and select it. And I'm going to show you why you don't want to use this option, because the trace looks pretty good, right? However, look at the star at the top, it's not traced at all. Even if I change the threshold, I'm moving the threshold way up. Okay, it, it finally is getting the star, but it's a making a mess out of everything else it has right here. So I'm gonna move this back like this. And no matter what I try to do, let's see, if I was to trace this, trust me, I might as well not do it. It's just not gonna be a good trace. Well, I'll do it to show you. Trace, and there we go. And then I want you to zoom in, or I'm gonna zoom in so you can see it. Okay, look at this. This is just not a very good trace at all. All these little extra jaggedy edges. These would all be nodes that we would have to get rid of. So it's not good at all. We're just going to get rid of that by hitting Control Z on my keyboard and going back. And I'm going to X out of that select trace area. So we have to do something that we haven't done in our class yet, you guys. And if you wonder what class I'm talking about, we have a class every Saturday morning for an hour. Uh, where we just go over Silhouette Studio and learn more and more about it. And we keep you know, repeating what we've already learned because the more often you revisit something, the better you learn it. But anyway, so I don't believe we've done this yet. So I'm going to click on the tree to highlight it. And then what I need to do is to come over here to the Image Effects panel and click on that. And I can move that panel over here so you can see it more clearly. So in the image effects panel, I'm going to click this middle button right here that says invert. And I hope y'all can hear me okay. I need to, I want to go over and tell them to talk, to whisper, but uh. anyway, I'm going to invert this and nothing seems to happen until I hit this slider right here and then watch the tree what's happening did you see that how that really just totally changes when I go back and forth okay I wasn't able to trace it very well before right but watch what I'm gonna be able to do now when I go to the trace I'm gonna come back over here to the trace panel which looks like the piece of toast like that and I'm gonna select the trace area I'm going to come over here and just go ahead and select this area. And I am going to get some of those little lines in it that are outside of the tree, but that's okay. We'll get rid of those. 
So right now it's not that great of a trace area, but I can change the threshold by moving this up. Okay, now I can keep sliding it up. Oh, that's too far, right? I can keep sliding it up until what I think looks good. Now this is what I did the other day that made me not have as nice of a gold line as I had before. So I'll trace this one and I'll show you. So if I say trace and then I move this out and watch this one make a fibber out of me. Let's see. Let me zoom in and see. Okay, on, the, on this one, actually, I got lucky, but I'm going to show you on a different one. So let's go do this again. This time, I'll just move this threshold up a little tiny bit more, maybe not quite that much, about there. And now if I said select trace, and I traced it, then I have some extra junk in here that I need to get rid of. Um, and actually, depending on... You know your image to begin with you may or may not have this stuff but see all this I could get rid of all of that and we know how to do that from the classes you know if I double click on this I get the nodes and of course I could simplify it so maybe there aren't as many but still what I need to do is get rid of all these little nodes in here to get rid of this extra trash that's going to cut or it's going to put down foil now in this case so that's not what we want I'm going to go undo that all the way back to where I was at. Right, I guess I'll just X out that trace and I'll do it again. So I'm going to come over to the trace panel again. I'm going to select the trace area. And I'm going to do this. Select the trace area. And again, that's not enough of a trace. So I know through my trial and error from my picture today, right now, 61 works for my threshold. So I'm going to change my threshold to 61% and hit enter. And that's all I need to do with that. And then I'm going to say trace. And I'm going to move this guy over because I'm going to need him again. I can't lose him. He's the one I'm going to need again, this blue guy. So right now this looks pretty terrific to me, except for that. You see there's a line right here that we don't want. And I can probably, let's see. Well, what I was going to do was I was just going to go ahead and use the eraser tool, which is over here on the far left, and just come over here and erase this line here because I don't need it at all. Usually when I'm using the eraser tool, I like to let off of my mouse every now and let, then and let it process and then do some more. And the reason being is if you make a mistake, you don't want to have to go back to where you started with your erasing. So if you just do some, take your finger off the mouse, let it process, you're good. So now the only other thing I want to do is to scroll in closely and see if there is any junk around here that I feel that I need to get rid of. So I'm just scrolling down and usually there is some junk, although this time, you know what, for today, it must be my lucky day or my lucky time right now because I'm not seeing much of anything. You know, if I was really picky, I could do something with this little spot right here. See that little spot? Okay, what I could do is double click on this and probably delete this node right here once it's there we go and so I still have a little spot so I'd want to probably delete this node but it can see how that flattened that out so I could do that all the way around if I wanted to if I saw more things but you know as I said this time now I did this earlier this morning and it wasn't this clean when I finished so I got lucky for the video so um, yay all right, so the next thing that I'm going to do after I did the, the eraser if I needed to and I got rid of any little teeny tiny nodes that were bothersome that I needed to, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this blue one back. Remember I said I needed him? So I'm going to bring him right back up in here and I'm going to uh, make sure I center it or have it right aligned perfectly so while it's selected I'm going to hit the arrow keys on my keyboard. See how it's going down now? 
just hitting the arrow keys on my keyboard to line that up as best I can. That's perfect, just like that. And now the only other thing that I have to do now is go back to the image effects panel over here. And if I'm going, seem to be going really, really fast, of course you can um, replay this. I'm gonna go back to the image effects panel over here. Right here, it looks like a half moon. Click on that. And while that's selected, I'm gonna come back up here to the invert button. And notice it popped all the way over to the 100 because that's what I had inverted it, the number I'd used before. So now all I have to do is scroll it back down and it's gonna be back to the color that we need it to be. So that's perfect. All right, so now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab all of this. And what I could actually do first is let me move the colored one out of the way. I'm gonna see if this will work right now. I think I like to do it later. If I make this a compound path, okay, there we go. That worked that time just like that. So, so now instead of these all being little pieces, individual pieces, it's just one piece. It's a compound path. So again, I can put these on top of each other. And I've noticed like if I try to do this and watch it work perfectly this time, but sometimes when I go up to the top to the bullseye type thing, the centering button, and I center it, okay, yeah. Look, it didn't work exactly how I would have wanted it to. See how that's not perfectly aligned? So what I would do then is just go ahead and click on whatever one. Let me scroll back out so I can grab one or the other. Okay, let's grab this one, I guess, and move my arrow keys so I can line it back up again nicely. And then what I would do is I would just grab both and say group. All right. All right, let's see what's next. Okay, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to resize this because I'm imagining I'm going to use it on the car on a card just like I had done my original one. So I like to resize mine to be about three, what did I do? 3.75 inches tall. You can do any number you want. That's just one I chose willy-nilly. So 3.75 approximately tall. I just used this box here and drag both at the same time and then um, I would come over here and that's what the height is so see that's about what it is okay and then leave the width be whatever it is automatically okay the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a box or a piece of paper that's gonna be like the front of my card and if you'll recall if you look down here again, let's see if I can move this. So if you can see here again on my card, I have the white card and then I have it mounted on the red one and then finally on the black one and then the white because I think it looks really pretty and it makes it a nice richer looking card when you do that. So uh, for us, what, we're, what I'm going to do first for this tree is I'm gonna make the white layer. That means I come over here on the left hand side where the drawing tools are and grab the box. And I just come over here and draw a box. And then what I'm gonna do is come up here to where I'm able to resize it. The lock is unlocked because I'm gonna resize each side individually. And I'm going to make the box about five inches in height and approximately 3.5 inches in width and hit enter on the keyboard, there you go. And then I'm gonna right click on that box and say send it to the back. So that allows me to put it behind my tree to see how it's gonna look and it's gonna look really nice. Of course, it's not gonna be blue, it's gonna be white. All right. So let's see, now I did the text also, so I'll show you how I did the text because that's part of the print then cut. I came way over here to the left hand side where the text tool is to open it up. And I typed in for unto you, for unto you dot dot dot, oops, dot 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 comma. Okay, so then this is not the font that I use. The font that I used and one that I love to use is the Samantha Craft font. And I will have a link for that 
for you below too because it's a fabulous font and you'll love using it in silhouette if you haven't tried it yet. So I come over here to the text style panel. Let me close the image effects panel first and come over to the text style panel. And here's all the text that I have in here. Everything that I have, or the fonts I should stay, say. And one that I recently used, notice it says recently used here. Um, I recently used, right here it is, Samantha Craft. And I click on that and there it is, it comes in beautifully just like that. But if you remember on my card, my F, the letter F did not look like that. I used a fancier one. So, I'm going to show you how easy it is to fix that in this software. So, I'm going to change this to, back to Samantha Craft up here. It should have stayed. Then, while it says Samantha Craft, you can see it right here, I'm going to change, I'm going to go to this middle part right here. You see, uh, there are three different buttons, and I, you might have to have Business Edition for this. I'm not sure. It might work in Designer or Designer Plus. But the second one in is for glyphs. If you click on that, that shows all of the fancy glyphs and things that are available in each font. Oops, it went back to Arial. Let me change it to Samantha Craft. There we go. Okay, so now when I scroll down here, I can see all the fancy letters and way down at the bottom in this particular one. Let me make it larger for you by hitting this. You can see some of the fancy letter or words that they have down here already pre-made up and fancy swirls. So anyway, I'm going to go, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for a fancier letter F because I like the one I found better to put on there. So, okay, we're at the E's. Let me get rid of this. All right, so I'm going to look for the fancier letter F. Now, here's a fancy one. I could use that, but I think that's an E, or it looks like an E to me. Maybe it is an E. <laughs> Let's go to the Fs. These are Fs, definitely. But the one that I like... Oh, here we go. Here's the one I like right here. That's the F I liked. And so I'll just put that there instead. And you see, that just automatically inserted that fancy F for me. So I can delete this. Now, what I want to do, if you'll notice, the little F is a little too far away in my opinion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on all this and ungroup it. And then I can just click on the F. And with the arrow key on my keyboard, I can just move this over like this. Okay, just like that. And so now what I've got to do is I'm going to group it back together again. And I'm going to change its color by coming up here to the upper left hand corner. I'm going to change it to black. Can you guys hear me with all that chatter over there? Okay, I'm making it smaller so it will fit in here. I know, isn't that a pretty font? I love it. And there's so many different things you can do with it with little swirls and that kind of stuff at the end. I, I really like it a lot. Anyway, so here it is set here, and I really like the way I have everything spaced pretty well. So the only thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to, okay, good, thanks Tammy. I'm going to group everything together. And the next thing I have to do, since I have a cameo, and that's just what I'm demonstrating today, who's talking? air conditioner repair people <laughs> okay so I have to come over here way up here to the page setup panel up here on the upper right and right now what I want to do is I want to make sure that registration marks are going to show up so I'm going to click right here and then right now it says they're off I'm going to change them to type 1 because I have a cameo and I'm turning them on just like that Okay, so I'm going to drag this guy down here, and I'm not going to try to be frugal like I always try to be too much too frugal. I'm going to put it about right here and be happy with that. Okay, but what I am going to do, and I meant to do, is to ungroup this again, and I want to change the blue card. I want to make it white, 
because I don't want blue to print. I just want a white card to be cut out. So that's what we have right here. So if we went right now to send, lots of stuff over here. If you have a Cameo and you're sending it to your Cameo, you see, uh, if I go to fill, you'll see there are one, two, three, four different things that are going to be cut or something. I'm going to use this little area right here to uncheck it so nothing is checked. And then I'm going to see what I do want to have checked. So if I click on this one, what does it do? It does that outline. I don't want that. I don't want that to cut. I don't want it to foil. So I'm going to ignore that top one totally. Matter of fact, I think I'll just move it down here to the bottom. I can just hold down my mouse key and drag it down. I'm going to check and see what this next one is. Okay, this next one I will want, you see what that is? That's going to be the cut for the outer card. You see when I click on that off and on, how it's going off and on? I am going to want that, and I'm going to change it from a sketch to a cut. And I'm using the ratchet blade, so I will adjust anything I need to on the depth of cut. Okay, let's continue on though. The next one is... Okay, that's going to be my gold for my foil. Now, in this machine, I'm going to have my quill pen thingy in the second tool slot. So this is the first tool, and this is the second tool. This is the sketch, and that's what I'm gonna do. That's gonna sketch. Okay, this one here, let's undo that one for a second. This one, okay, for unto you, that's for the text. I don't need to do anything with that. That's already going to have been printed uh, for this. And again, that's the thing I put at the bottom. So what I have right now, again, the two I want to use are this one, which is the outside of the card, and this one, which is the gold. Now, when I do mine, and I guess probably everybody as well, I like it to foil first. So all I have to do is grab this foil and drag it up to the top, just so I remember. And I will be checking this to have it do this first and that be the only thing that's going to be done. But let's go back to design for a minute because what I do have to do is I have to go ahead and send this to my printer first. So I'm gonna to go to File, Prints, Preferences. I like to make sure that it's on Best and if I have cardstock or something like that, I'll put that here. And then I'll just say okay. And I'll send that to my printer right now. And while that's printing, I am going to go ahead and plug in, move some stuff out of the way, plug in this guy into my new little thing my husband got me this morning. Did you notice the light go on when I plugged that in? So I'm gonna set this back behind my machine so I don't have to worry about the cord. I see people all the time having trouble worrying about their cord. As long as it's right back here and it's free to move back and forth, and I better make sure that my paper can move back and forth, okay? Yep, it's back far enough. And this can move. Matter of fact, yeah, I think that's going to be just fine. Okay, so now that's printed and I'm ready to go. Alright, so let me get my printed one out. And I actually have another one printed over there just in case I had any issues, but I printed one earlier, which you can see here. And what I'm going to show you is me putting the foil on this. So let me bring it over here now and I'll show you how I go ahead and put the foil on. All right, so here's the gold foil. And you, lots of times I do like to use my rotary cutter, but I'm just gonna use my scissors today. And I just go like this, kind of make sure it's gonna be big. Remember, don't be so stingy and frugal that you're going to waste more than you would have if you just gave yourself a little tiny bit more to use. So, just got to have my scissors. I'm just going to kind of cut along here. Okay. So, 
So now I'm going to tape this onto here, just like this. I have my tape already ready. I have it cut off, ready to put on. I put my top piece on. Then I like to peek under here and make sure is everything definitely being covered, and it certainly is. So then, just kind of flatten this out a little bit. Get my next piece. And I just like to put it on the bottom of this a little bit without attaching it to the cardstock to begin with. And then I just pull it taut like this. Okay. Then I'll do one of the sides. This is washi tape that comes with the kit. And now I wasn't being really careful to know how much wiggle room I had on the side and I don't want my tape to overlap and I've got plenty of room over here so my tape's not going to be an issue at all. That's a problem that I promise you'll probably have when you do your first one or two. You'll put your tape in an area where it will get uh, where the foil needs to be or where the quill needs to go. So I don't like what happened right there. There's pretty good. Last piece. Okay, there we go. That's pretty good. Looks a little tiny bit of a wrinkle right here, but I think it'll be okay. Uh, famous last words. Not exactly sure. I'll just take one more little piece of tape and that will probably hold that right where I need it to be. Let's see. I do this and I stretch that a little straighter. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so even though it looks pretty wrinkly, I see that on my screen, it's pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in my machine and I'll switch my view so you can watch that. But one thing I did forget to do was set a timer. Huh, I wonder if that's been five minutes, probably not. So I'm gonna wait another two minutes maybe to make sure that my little quill is heated enough for it to work. So let me see, does anybody have any questions while I'm waiting for a moment? Let me look at the chat. So again, like I said, I'll have the link for you below for the tree and for some of the products that I used in case you're wanting to know what they are. If you use my links, I, get, I do get a small commission and I appreciate that. Yes, oh, I forgot, and de definitely make sure that you subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Once I get to 20,000 subscribers, and that should be within a couple of weeks, I'm expecting to be at 20,000, I'm gonna give away a Cameo 3. If I get there, excuse me, before the end of September. Um, the other thing is, if you're new to Silhouette, go over to my blog. I have a series, but let me show you right quick while we're waiting for this to heat up. Let's see, I can show you here. If you go, there's the tree. If you go over here to my blog, pattyannsplace.blog or .com, but .blog for sure, you come to this and watch what happens when I refresh it. It's gonna cut, pop up with this thing right here. Get started with Silhouette fry, Five Easy Steps. If you sign up with your email address, you'll get a video link for a class that walks you through step-by-step step how to use the Silhouette software uh, and it, you'll get one video per week that, and it'll be about an hour long teaching session and it's free, you know? And the last one's my very favorite one, How to Trace, which is basically how to make your own SVGs. And it's free. I'm not gonna send you a bunch of junk. If you do sign up, you will be in my newsletter as well, which means, let me show you what that means. When you get a newsletter, you'll get access to the library of free files that we're starting to accumulate here. In the newsletter, you'll get a password for the free files. And I'll just stick this in here. And these are some of the files that we have. I don't know how to save it right now. And here they are right here. Recently, okay. Some of these are rhinestones, and yes, you can use those in Cricut Design Space. Some of these are Halloween ones. 
when you click on any of these, what you're going to get is a, a zip file and you'll get the SVG and you'll get a picture of what it was and you'll also get um, a, a README file. And I recommend you look at that file first, especially if you're using Cricut because it will have some information in there for sizing for you. So isn't this pretty right here, the rhinestone shirt? And so the most recent one we did was this one right here. And unfortunately, I can't click on it to make it larger for you. Because once I click on it, what you're going to do is you're going to get... When I click on it, what you're going to do is you're going to get uh, the zip file. It's going to start zipping or unzip or, you know, downloading. And so this one here was kind of funny. I would kill for some candy, for some Halloween candy. But anyway, these are some of the ones that we have available right now. And if you have a little kid in the house, this was a fun one to make. And I actually got permission from the author to read a book at the very end about peacocks. It's pretty interesting and fun. So if you have a kid or a grandkid, you know, you might want to look that one up. Okay, let's see what else. I guess that's got to be five minutes by now, right? So, oh, here's the Patreon classes too. It's patreon.com slash pattyn, and I saw Tammy gave you a link for that. So, let's go back to, oops, not that, not that. Let's go back to this view, and I think it's ready to go. So I'm gonna put this in here. Everybody hold their mouths just right, like you had to do yesterday. I'll take the heat shield out, place it right here so I don't lose it, and just go ahead and put this in. All right, so let me go back to, I have to go back to select on my screen, and I'm gonna go here. Okay, well, hopefully, what I've done was, I had done this earlier, so hopefully I have saved this properly. And it's gonna work just fine. Switch this one out for this one. All right. Let's load her up. And again, in my Silhouette software over here, what I'm doing is I'm making sure when I go to send that the only one should, now look, it's a good thing I came back over here because the one I want to work right now is this one, the sketch one. I do not want the cut one to work yet. I just want the sketch, which is basically going to be the heat foil. So, all right, hold your mouth just so, let's hope it works. Go to send. Anybody else get nervous? I especially get nervous when I'm doing these live things. All right, send. It's going to be reading the registration marks first. And I should put it back so you can see what it's doing. Okay, it's reading all the registration marks just like it would do on your Cricut machine if you have one. And after it reads those, it's going to start with the foil pen. Oh, you know what, Barbara? I forgot about those rollers again. No, I did not move them. I don't think that you have to. No one has told me I had to. And it's worked out perfectly without moving the rollers. Hi, Diane. Hi, Eddie Jr. Yes, be sure you confirm your subscription because otherwise you will not get the newsletter. And you have to look in your spam, too, if you don't find it if you have a really strict email provider. Could you turn the tree on side on and fit two at a time if you're a bad partner? I don't see why not, Stephanie, for sure, but you'd have to, of course, now the um, foil that I'm using only comes in six inch wide strips. So I have to put two strips of the foil on, but that should work perfectly, absolutely. And that would save cardstock, because right now I, I waste a piece of time. Oh, the only issue might be, Stephanie, watch what I'm going to do next. I have to take the foil off. So if it doesn't go up far enough to let me take the foil off, it could be an issue. Okay, it's getting close to done. Thank 
you, you guys. I'm glad I got my extra uh, iPad today so you can be watching this part. Carmen, did you just sign up? Because I think it does take five or ten minutes before you get it. But if you did it days ago, I'll have to double check to see what's happening. Okay, it's getting to the top. I'm gonna do the star. Okay, so far seemingly so good. I'm gonna take off some of this tape and peek at it and make sure that it worked as I expected before I take it all the way off. Oh yeah. Okay, what I'm going to do now before I take it all the way out, I need to go back up to my Silhouette Design Studio up here. So right now what we just did was we did this first one that I have checked, Cardstock Plane and Sketch. I'm going to uncheck that one and check the next one down because that should be the, oh, I got to make sure, yep, it should be the outer box. I'm going to check that. It's set to cut. I have my rat chip leg cut or set. So I'm just going to say send. And again, I'll move you back so you can see what's happening over here. So once again, it's reading the registration lines. And now it's going to cut the card. Okay, it's finished. Let's see. Yep, perfect. I'm going to unload my mat. No, you cannot use the, you can use the business edition of this software with your Cricut. You cannot use the designer edition. And the reason why is designer edition does not allow you to save things as SVGs. And you need an SVG file for your Cricut. So you have to have the business edition for your Cricut. All right, y'all, let me show you. It turned out beautifully. Change this camera. Here it is. Let's see, where do I go? There we go. How pretty is that? Isn't that gorgeous? So pretty. And of course, I could have, you know, foiled the words. There's a lot that you can do with this. Now, imagine the fun you're going to have finding things that you can add foil to that just give it that extra little bit of pizzazz. You know, you know how I like rhinestones, but this would not be something that you could add rhinestones to. But it's really turned out nicely. So, again, and I wouldn't probably put it on a blue piece of cardstock, but no, I know I wouldn't. <laughs> anyway, so then you can see this one how it was. But again, look at the difference between the two of these. Look at the way this worked because on this one, I didn't do a very good job when I traced it. I had the threshold wrong. See that? And then look at the difference of this one. Can you tell the difference? So you really have to mess with the threshold a bit so you can get a nice sharp foil line. Thank you, Stephanie and Diane. Thanks, Carmen. Hey, do you guys have any questions before I get on out of hemp? <laughs> so I do, like I said, I will have the link below for this tree if you want to give it a try yourself. I also have a link for um, 
the foil quill. They do sell it on swing design, but it's more expensive there. I think it's like $39 on Amazon. And this one gives you the three quills and three rolls of the foil. And actually those rolls are pretty big because I've been using a lot of it. And let's see, oh, and you get the adapters. You get four different types of adapters, I believe it is. You get the one for the silhouette and for the silhouette, let me unplug this right now, I right, quick. For the silhouette, you use the A adapter. And for the Cricut, you use the C. Now, from what I understand, if you purchase the um, Cameo 4, which I bought one just so I can use it for you guys to show you what I think of it and how well it works. Uh, and for the Cameo 4, from what I understand, you're going to have to use the C adapter rather than the A that we use for the Cameo 3. So let's see. Yes, it is more of a solid fill. Well, thanks, Diane. <laughs> All right, let's see what else. So the tree I showed you, the tree I should told, I'm gonna give you the link for that. Um, I guess that's about it. Let's see, oh, how gorgeous, thank you. Got a Cricut for Christmas in the full cool set in March, but I can't do much with them in Cricut, dang it. Well, you should be able to do a lot with it in Cricut with your foil quill. Christy, what have you tried to do that you feel you cannot do? Oh, you know what though? You might like to have the business edition of this software. Just ask for it for a Prezi. I think if you go to, uh, well, my link to Swing Design, it's between $50 and $60. And it's for this software. It's not like something you have to keep paying for. Once you buy it, it's yours. And you can do so much with it. Let me just show you real quick. If I were to write the word, oh, this is locked. See this, you guys? See that little lock? I locked this one so I wouldn't mess it up and move it accidentally before I went ahead and uh, after I printed it, before I cut it. So let me go to a different one. There we go. And let me just write in the word thanks. And I'll change it to that font. And oh yeah, that font I'll have a link for below too. Tammy, if you could remember what I'm saying, I'm going to put links for. I'd appreciate it. So it's the Samantha Craft. And I can make it really big for you guys and I can make it prettier by going here. Now see, you'll be able to use all of this stuff for your Cricut machine. Uh, let's say I wanna make the S different. I wonder where that would be, L-M-N-O-P-Q-R. <laughs> Let me make the S different. N-O-P-Q-R-S, there's some S's. Okay, so let's say instead of having this S right here, I want to have this one. I'll just click on that. Oops, I accidentally made two of them. Let me ungroup it and get rid of one of them. But see how easy that is? Yeah, I just love it. And I could change the T too. I'd probably make that something fancy. But my point was what I wanted to show you also for the people that use Cricut machines, you know how you always want to do offsets? Let me show you how easy an offset is in this. All you do is come right over here to this thing that looks like a star it's the offset panel oh you can't see my screen all you see is me thanks for telling me <laughs> there now you'll be able to see my screen so let me go back that, 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 that. all right now in just a moment you should be able to see my screen and what I've decided to do You're welcome. All right, so you should be able to see my screen in, right now, okay. So in this S right here, if I don't want this plain old S, I just scrolled into here after I was in Samantha Craft, I came to the middle button, that's the glyph button, found a pretty S, clicked on it, and put it in just like that, and it's beautiful. So now I'm just gonna group these together, and what I actually should do is weld them, just like we do in Cricut Design Space, weld. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna offset it. And this is just something else I wanted to show y'all that's so easy to do. If you have Cricut Design Space, I'm gonna group these now. And I'm gonna come over here to this little uh, thing that looks like a star, it is a star. And it looks like it has a little offset on it. Whoops, it's this one. 
click on that and it opens an offset panel. And then if I want to offset this for like a cake topper or just anything, all I have to do is click the word offset and it puts an offset around it automatically just like that. And I can change its color so that you can see it easily. I could make it, you know, make this part white, the blue text white and that part pink like that. And I can change the size of the offset. It's just so much easier than trying to do it in Cricut Design Space. And like I said, a $50 or $60 um, output from you for a software that you own that you can do so much with for your Cricut. Also, you guys, if you are thinking about getting this or if you do have it, be sure to look at the um, testimonials that I have over on my blog. You'll see some things that some of the current students have said about the classes. Okay, let's see if there's anything else. Yesterday's card looked amazing <laughs> until you showed the card. You just Oh, yeah, right? You can tell the difference, I know. Shh, don't tell. <laughs> let's see. I can, but filling in images... Y'all, I want to show you other one, one other thing real quick. So I think I may have showed something like this. Well, let's see. Let's just say I'm going to use the word, I mean the S. Okay. And I'm going to make it really, I'm going to make it larger. And let's say I want to use, I just want to foil a big S on the front of a card or something. So I can just go to... What am I? Let me think. I'm listening to the air conditioner man. He's going to be opening the garage door in a moment. <laughs> All right. So let's see. Um, I'm going to. Sorry, guys. Okay. What did I say? I was going to. I was going to foil this. So, and I wanted to put some stuff in the center of it. Well, you know what? This will probably be for another class. What I would use is this sketch tool down here, but you know, I think I'll just wait and hang on for this for another class. I think we did do some of this in one of the classes like this, and then you could put the edge on it like that. So what this would do then is this would foil the outside edge of the S, and then would foil these lines in here like this. But you can change it up different ways as well. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Before we quit, let me look back up and through here. I'm so glad y'all joined me. And wasn't today fun because everything worked? <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. Line effects. Yeah, the line effects tool. Yep, you're right, Barbara. That's what it was, the line effects tool. Right down here. It's called the sketch panel. And then it actually comes up with line effects. And you can change it up. Look at that one. That one's kind of interesting looking. I don't know if you can see it well. Let me scroll in a little closer. So see that? That's what your foil pen would do or your foil would do in the letter S if you wanted it to do the S. You could do cross hatching. And if you do any of these, of course, you can change the spacing. So actually, this would, even though sometimes you're doing those letters that seem like they're hollow, you could, if you did a, uh, if you were using a pen rather than the foil, you could fill them in like this. Of course, it would be take some time, but you could make them filled letters rather than hollow letters. Okay. Yeah, me too, Stephanie. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Anybody else have any questions or comments? How many of you out there do have the foil quill? Or you're just trying to see what it, how it works. You're welcome, Betsy. All right, Betsy does. Have you done much with it, Betsy? Tammy does. <laughs> Anybody else? Stephanie, you don't, do you? Not yet, Roxana. Mm -mm. 
Friday. Okay, great. Deal, you don't have it. Thanks, Christy. Okay, great. All right. Well, big shout out to my husband, Dave, for getting me this nice extra iPad to use. I'm doing a shout out to you, David. Oh. <laughs> Because you got me my extra iPad. <laughs> Thanks. You and the air conditioner man done? Almost. Almost. Ah, uh, okay. Alrighty. Well, I will see you all again soon. And I'm getting a little better at using this YouTube thing. Maybe um, I won't be late the next time I do it. <laughs> Still trying to fiddle around figuring out what I'm doing. So again, thanks for joining me. See you all again soon. I hope you've subscribed to me on uh, YouTube if you haven't yet. Also, join us over in Facebook and think about joining the Patreon classes. We have a lot of fun and we learn a lot. And also, one last thing, the free class is over on my website. So, thanks again. And the battery pack. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Dave got me the battery pack, too, Tim. He said, yep. Thanks, Dave. Yeah. Ha, ha, ha. He's already back upstairs now with the air conditioner, man. So. All right. I'm going to end this if I can figure out where and how. Thanks again, you guys. You're welcome, Barbara. Thank you. Hugs to you, too.